Flexible facilities, I can't underline this enough. Flexible facilities are huge. For years and years and years, before I got involved in Building God's Way, the facilities that I designed, I largely did the way that my previous generations of architects that I was trained under did, and that is load-bearing masonry walls because you don't want the kids to beat up the walls. There's a lot of families, there's a lot of people in these buildings, you better make sure that you have load-bearing masonry walls. I haven't done a load-bearing masonry wall in 10 years. We just don't do them. We put up fiber rock walls, a uh, sheetrock that has fiberglass in them. You can take a baseball bat to those walls and you can't damage those walls. But we do it very differently because that space is going to change. Ministry is going to change and shift. We want to think hard about revenue generation. Think of your church not just for Sundays anymore. Think about ways to, revenue, to generate revenue. We have one church that built this beautiful $50,000 worth of custom equipment in their kitchen. Beautiful kitchen. They use it a couple times a week. And they finally figured out we got two caterers in the congregation that have been asking about it. So now they lease out that kitchen and they, they gain $3,000 per month income on their kitchen space, leasing it out to caterers who coordinate schedules with them so they don't cross paths with the congregation. And now their kitchen is getting full use and they're getting their kitchen paid for. These children's playgrounds areas that we showed before, we have another church that has had one for 10 years They've had over 1,000 birthday parties in there. They've made $400,000 in income off that space when the church doesn't need it. That's not wrong. That's good stewardship. Let's think about these facilities so they don't sit empty all week long. Let's think about the way that that happens. We're getting involved in, in, a, in a, a program. We've been involved in a program of doing housing for seniors, assisted care living that's associated with churches. Those are good matches. Daycares are good matches if they're done right. Those are the kinds of things that we, we're going to have to think hard about as we, have to, if, as we are thinking about how to mitigate the challenges to the church income pie charts we saw before. Those things are, are happening. Repurposing existing buildings. One of you all was telling me that you all did a building in a, down in Keokuk. You guys did the building in a Walmart. Great idea. Great idea. Re using re-existing facilities. And they're out there in our communities. So... What do we do? We, do, we design with steel. We, we, have, we just simply do steel design, and we do it in a very different way, which we'll talk a little bit about this afternoon. But for the most part, we really try to stick with something that's going to go up very quickly and that's going to offer flexibility to us. Those kinds of things are very, very important to think about. Creating spaces that have multiple uses in mind, and oftentimes that means that we have to think hard about adjacent storage space. You have to have a place to put all this stuff. If you're going to set it up for chairs, you have to have a place to put the chairs so that your room doesn't become a jumble of storage on the side of the room. So storage is more important to think about intelligently. But make sure you think about if you're going to have a 1,000 people standing in that room just standing around drinking coffee, you don't, you're not going to want to have all those chairs and furniture pieces in there. Where does it go? How's that going to work? Church buildings are not just for Sundays anymore. We have a pastor down in uh, Southern California near the San Diego area, uh, New Hope Community Church, that figured out pretty quickly when they got this building built in a, in a relatively sparse area and the neighborhood started to grow up around it, they, he figured out pretty quickly he was getting all kinds of requests for space. And so he made it a goal that he wants to figure out a way to get 1,200 people a week to come into that church that are not connected to the church. So he has yoga, he has taekwondo classes, he has parenting classes. Some of these are ministry-driven classes that are offered for free. Others charge rent. But it doesn't matter. Nobody's offended by it. They come in, they've charged a little bit of rent, they come in, they have the class, and then when their life crisis comes along or when they meet a neighbor who goes to this church and they say, hey, you want to come to New Hope? They've been there. It's not a barrier to them anymore. They know how to get in the front door. It makes sense for them. There's a church down in Olathe, Kansas that we're working with that, where the young moms are using their fitness room as a space for them to go out to their neighborhoods and invite the other young moms who have just gotten through their pregnancies who don't feel comfortable going down to the meat market place to work out. So they come to the church right next to where the kids are attended, right next to the coffee bar. And all of a sudden, the young moms have a ministry of reaching out to their neighborhoods using spaces inside. And on Sundays, all that exercise equipment gets rolled away, and now they have a place for a small adult group or a college group to meet. Multi-purpose type space used intentionally and with the idea of possibly generating income, because that's going to become more and more important. Escondido, Seventh-day Adventist Church, their entire mortgage is paid for by two churches that use it on Sundays because their Sabbath is on Saturday. Very important. The other two churches have no intention of building a building. Trying to get a building built in Escondido is like 
trying to climb Mount Everest. They finally got, after years and years of haggling with the city, they finally got their two buildings built, and now they have something they can really use, and they can use for other churches too, and not let it sit dormant on, on Sundays. Repurposing existing buildings. Uh, this is a before picture of a church up in Bend, Oregon. I don't know what style of architecture you'd call this, Dean. I'd, maybe 70s French bad vernacular of some sort. I don't know what, what is it? Just plain bad, yeah. I think, I think that's probably the best description for it, just plain bad. But turning it into something that's more relevant in this mountain community, something that picks up the appearance, changes the materials a little bit, and just really being attentive to the outside of the building. How do we make that more relevant for that area? Uh, retail buildings, using retail buildings in, in a wise way. There's lots of these things that are available out there. For years, we worked with a congregation that tried to get a building built. They sold their building, and uh, they went out looking for land, and they, they just were chasing a never-ending, escalating dream of cost. And finally, when the, when the Great Recession hit here a few years ago, these kinds of buildings started going up in the marketplace in Brea, California for 10 cents on the dollar. They went out and bought 40,000 square feet for what they could build 10,000 square feet and got into this building and then started to repurpose the space. Now they've finished off about 15 or 20,000 square feet on the interior and made very acceptable worship space. They've had to accept a few columns and design seating around those columns, but it works very nicely for them. Some of the most fantastic children's spaces I've ever seen in this building. Wonderful, and it was designed as an office building. This is a concept that we're talking about all over the nation called the Meeting Point. This is a for-profit building built by people from churches who are developers, who have the understanding about how to develop conference centers, basically. Conference centers that allow for concerts, that allow for training events, that allow for conferencing events, that allow for all kinds of things. And oh, by the way, it's used on a church on the weekend. And the church doesn't pay anything for it. And when the mortgage, when the, when the developers pro forma plays out over the years that it makes sense for him, the church has donated the property. These kinds of things can make sense for a church. These are, these are things that are playing into the dynamics of the, the kinds of marketplaces that we are dealing with. So you can design these kinds of facilities, and the great thing about them is, is people are standing there who have no connection to this church saying, hey, I think there's a church that meets here on Sunday. And those conversations can, can begin to be had. So you're getting people through the front door, and all you're doing is designing flexible space. Very important.